You know, some movies reflect the lowest iterations of culture and stereotypes that ever existed. And I think the trailer I'm about to review right now is an example of that. So my friends, normally I stay out of this business of looking at movies that may or may not be impacted by political messaging or wokeness in the contemporary age, in the 21st century. I'll happily go back to the, uh, to the 20th century, look at some political movies, because I think they're much more interesting, much more novel, they have more philosophical um, themes in them. And today, these movies that involve wokeness and involve other kinds of things, tend to simply be boilerplate things that you could see from anywhere else. But I came across this trailer called Bros, which was released a few months ago as of the posting of this video, um, and is the trailer for a movie, Bros, that is coming out uh, as of the posting of this video very, 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 very soon. And, and it's already had its, uh, its, um, uh, it, its, it, its release at a film festival, but its theatrical release will be coming out very soon. So I decided, you know what, why don't I review this trailer. Um, it, it, it's ostensibly about gay representation and gay life and things about that. And uh, as someone himself who was of that disposition, I wanted to see exactly what's going to be said here and what's going to be conveyed here. I think I have a good idea. I've seen bits and pieces of this trailer, but let's look at the whole thing here and try to examine this for what it is. So without further ado, let's go. Hey guys, it's Bobby Lieber coming to you from the future home of the LGBTQ plus museum. Everyone is really excited mm. and totally getting along. This happens to be Bisexual Awareness Week and no one has acknowledged it. Lesbian History Month was in March. Nobody said a goddamn thing. Of course, lesbians get a month and we get a week. Okay, so let me just stop it right there. I have never and never will I ever understand or really appreciate the basis for these um, identity-based category here, History Month, whether it's Women's History Month, whether it's Black History Month, whether it's Gay History Month or LGBTQ Month or Pride Month or whatever. I don't understand it because I don't like the premise. The premise is, A, intractable, immutable characteristics have histories. I don't think that's correct. You're attributing values to immutable characteristics that do not fit with them. That's number one. Number two, it also presumes that if those things do have histories, you can encapsulate it into a single month. Both of these assumptions, one is logically erroneous and the other is downright insulting and promotes laziness on the behalf of the people running these months. And it also promotes exclusion. This is what happens with Black History Months. There are plenty of black thinkers who are heterodox and conservative, like Clarence Thomas or like the late, late great George Shuler, who criticized a lot of things in African American culture and communism back in the 40s and 50s, who are not even spoken of when the massive advertisements happen for Black History Month, but they'll go on and on and on about Malcolm X and Dr. King. Not saying that those two individuals didn't have anything to contribute. Both of those two individuals are very interesting, but the market is oversaturated with them because they have been in the public consciousness for so long. Pride Month is the same kind of thing. It is sort of this act of collectivizing the act of liking men, which is really an individual attribute, and then putting it in the context of this broader idea about what, how, how you do that, how you like men in a proper way, how to be gay in a proper way, and then pushing it out through cultural marketing and things of that sort. It is an airbrushed account of a characteristic that doesn't really need any kind of elaborate account at all. After the Stonewall riots, the prevailing sentiment among some gay people was that the government and society is trying to oppress us and deny us equal rights, therefore let's fight. Now, the prevailing sentiment among some other of them was that not only are they trying to oppress us, but we need to, uh, we need to awaken class consciousness. So there was a sort of subversive element to the gay liberation movement as well, but there was also this people that just wanted to fight back and, and get equal rights. There's nothing wrong with that, but what this morphed into is concerning. So these history months, these history weeks, uh, they are logically erroneous. Um, they try to give value to things that really shouldn't have that much value at all. Whether you like a man or whether you're black or whether you're white, these things don't matter. Your character matters. Your uh, ability to habituate good values, that matters. So anyway, let's, this is already going off to a bad start. Let's just let's, let's keep going. 
Also, George Michael is one of the most brilliant singers, songwriters, musicians that to ever exist. And it's quite insulting that they're playing his music over, over this trailer. Freedom's a good song. It's the, the song that they're playing here is Freedom. Uh, it's, 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 it, 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 it's a song about interpersonal dynamics. It's a song about um, you know what love and relationships can get us into, some of the conflicts they can get us into. And it's also the song about being an independent person and regardless of whoever wants to tie you down. It's a song about self-reliance and resilience. That's what it's about. Uh, anyway, let's go on. So what's happening? Didn't you guys have an announcement? This is a little unexpected, but we are in a thruple situation. A thruple? Okay. All right, dear God. <sighs> Unfortunately, this kind of sexual relationship is quite prevalent amongst gay culture, if you even want to say it like that. Again, I don't like collective terms, but sometimes the only helpful and easy way to describe a generally occurring phenomenon is through a collective term. So forgive me, but I'm just going to say it. In gay culture, there is an emphasis on non-traditional sexual relationships. You may hear it called sexual non-monogamy. You may hear it called open relationships. You may hear it called polyamory. All of these different distinctions in the genre of non-traditional sexual relationships all bear the same characteristic in that they don't involve commitment to one person. They involve splitting yourselves between one, two, or however many more people you want to, despite the fact that you're supposed to be in the context of a romantic relationship. Over 30, according to data, recent data, over 30% of gay men are in open relationships, which can include things like thruples, but it can also include things like having sex outside of a a committed relationship with other people and still being able to go back to that partner you had sex, uh, the, the partner you're supposed to be with and, and, and be with them. It's a very weird arrangement. It's a very odd arrangement. And it's an arrangement that in my opinion is detrimental to the soul. When you commit to something, my friends, you are saying, this is my primary object of focus. And that allows you to allocate your efforts towards making sure that thing is good. But when you, engage in partial commitments, there is no possible way to satisfy the totality of all of your commitments. So if I say I'm going to be a bus driver and I'm going to be an airline pilot, there's no possible way for me to do those same, two, two same things in perpetu perpet perpetuity unless I go ahead and I space them out. But even if I space those two things out, both of those two activities require a certain level of commitment. There is no way for you to have you to have a romantic partner and to also be having sex with a bunch of men or a bunch of women if you're straight or whatever. There's no way for you to be able to keep your relationship in full fidelity, even if you think that you and your partner have an agreement. Some things transcend our ability to choose. The limit na limited nature of the human being is not up for discussion. These are facts about our human nature. And so monogamous relationships are actually good facilitators of the proper condition of man. Open relationships actually impede and hurt the proper condition of man. Let's keep going. Let me tell you what's progressive now, being alone. I love my life, I love my freedom, I love my independence. That's kind of sad. That I don't want to be in a thruple, I don't even want to be in a couple. There are a lot of gay men who end up getting old and alone in their older age, as this gentleman was here, in the middle age, because as a young person, they chased sex, they chased materialism, they chased career. This is a, a this is something that is, it's a, it's a problem. It's a serious problem. Um, it, it really just shows that no matter how much vanity you chase, None of that can give you real fulfillment. As human beings, we are social creatures. And as social creatures, we desire others. And we have different categories of desire. And one of those categories is romantic desire. And if you just choose to live alone because of the disappointments of life or because of your bad experiences in the past, there's a part of your nature that's not being fulfilled. This is not to say that you need someone else to be a complete person. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it is very important to have the different parts of who you are as a human being fulfilled to have a happy life. That's all I'm saying. Freedom. 
Bobby, I had sex with that 65 year old. Jesus, he's ripped. I know, it's like they injected steroids into Dumbledore. Oh my God, that's Aaron. He's very hot. Mm. Gay guys are so stupid. I know. But we've been smart enough to brand ourselves as being smart. It's our little Jeez. secret. I had sex with that 65 year old. What? That happens too. Okay. Dear God. This movie is a perfect representation of why some people may see homosexuals as deviants, why some people may be suspicious. I'm not justifying it at all, by the way. If you look at someone because of their sexual orientation, you say, you're a deviant, something's wrong with you. I, I, don't, I don't care. If, if someone is engaging in activities with another consenting adult and you have a problem with that, I, I don't have anything nice to say about you. Um, now, if you're a Christian and you have faith, that's different. But if you like judge someone's uh, the quality of someone's character because of the sexual orientation and say, well, if you're gay, you're a predator. Okay, no, that's not what I'm talking about. But this kind of stuff right here is one of the reasons why people have certain opinions. Why is bragging about having sex with some random person because they are hot something to be proud about? It's not. It's you admitting that you are materialistic in your vein, but yet if you go on Twitter, you go on any of these online gay spaces, and I'll give you a secret that'll upset some of you, whether it's a gay progressive space or whether it's a gay conservative space, especially amongst gay conservatives, who aren't really conservative in my opinion in many cases, you will see them thirsting, as the more colloquial term, lusting over any person that they see, even if that person is a particularly bad person. I'll give you an example. Jacob Wool. Jacob Wool is a scam artist who, with his lawyer friend, used to have these press conferences where he accused politicians of molesting people and sexually assaulting people. And Jacob Wool actually came on my show and I gave him a piece of my mind. And he's been exposed as a fraudster several times. And yet there are various gay conservatives who lusted over this man who was trying to cause pain and havoc to innocent people. That is a problem. Now, this is not just a gay problem. This is also a problem with heterosexuals as well, who may lust over a woman, even if she's not a good person or the woman over the man. This is actually a pretty uh, potent case with uh, Mr. Bundy, Ted Bundy. There are a lot of women who say, oh, Bundy was so handsome, therefore I like him. That's a problem, but I'm talking about the gay culture right now, this is a very pronounced problem. And uh, it's so. You met a guy? I don't think I'm his type. He's like gay Tom Brady. What are you into? One of these ripped idiots with no opinions? No, I'd like someone who's physically very frail and won't stop talking. And I bet he's as intimidated by you as you are by him. I'm down for whatever. Yeah, I can do whenever and I can do whatever. Cool, whatever, whenever. GIF of Michael Scott dancing. Office GIF? This person isn't gay. I have spent all my years in I need you to be honest with me. You like these rowy meathead idiots. Oh, look, they're fighting. You like that? Hey. I can be tough like your you boys. Like to oh, that's what you like, huh? Oh, what's going on? Oh, that's cool. Bye bye. I can be tough like your boys. You know, this actually speaks to a problem. This idea of masculinity, which among some men who are homosexual, is a attraction, and among some of them, there is actually an attachment to fear. And the idea, this is what happens. When you put yourself in a box, when you say, okay, I'm gay, I'm black, I'm this, I'm that, you automatically inherit the problems and fears of other people that other people have attached to that label. As opposed to simply saying that I'm an individual, who happens to have inclinations, but I am most certainly first and foremost an individual, which therefore leaves you responsible to your own actions. When you put yourself in this kind of box, you inherit all these problems. That's why people say, well, there are problems in the gay community. Well, I'm not a part of a gay community. I'm not a part of anything like that. I don't, I don't endorse that kind of stuff. There is no gay community. I am not, a, I am not related to someone just because we happen to like men. I don't know anything about that person. I am only related to someone if we conspire together. Cons conspirare being the Latin word, I probably butchered that, which means to breathe together. If I breathe together with someone on the basis of shared values and as a baseline, not gay, not straight, not, but on a baseline of common humanity, then 
I am fine inheriting the problems and fears and, and joys of that person. That's what friendship is all about. But this is like a superficial kind of bond here. And this little masculinity thing kind of reflects that. Let's go. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Now I have to go to a Pride party and you're both too old to be in the pool. Please leave. Too old to be in the pool. This is what I'm talking about. Why, why are they promoting this stuff? This is what I'm talking about. This is precisely what I'm talking about. Gay culture in general is a very vain, vapid, materialistic place where nothing is sustained and everything is quid pro quo and transactional. There's no sort of universal affectation towards your, your, next, your, your, your fellow man. It's all transactional. What kind of buy does he have? You know, uh, how, how good is he or how good are they in bed? You know, what's their political stance? Are they progressive? Or, 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 or if they're not progressive, they're not, they're not for us. This is how a lot of people think amongst gay culture. And, and then you have people on the other hand, the, the so-called gay conservatives, who say, oh, uh, uh, um, I'm different from all of them, but yet I'm going to use my sexuality as a means of making all of you like me. <laughs> You know, I, I am a conservative, a uh, constitutional conservative, and I have done a video over why I, have, I, I took down the rainbow flags in my bios, and I've told people I'm not going to openly label myself as a gay conservative because that puts up a blinder to who I truly am deep down inside. That is an individual that, as Walton would say, contains multitudes and complexities that are not always and cannot always and should not always be measured by simple boxes. This is what if this if this trailer tells you guys anything, it's that the 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 terror of staying trapped in boxes are things that are not productive and things that lead to the drainage of human potential. Chasing materialism until your sixties and going to clubs, dancing around, having sex with all kind of guys with no deeper relationship. That's a drainage of your potential if your efforts were focused on one person and they were channeled into one person that could lift you up, that could build you up, that could, that could be your rock and your foundation when you needed it, as opposed to people who don't have any interest in you except sex, which they can get from anywhere else. That's, the, that's a drainage of your potential. Appending political values to sexual orientation is a drainage of your potential because it keeps you in a one-track mind. All these things mess with your human potential. And unfortunately, a lot of gay men embrace this to their mental detriment. I'll explain that in a second. People are threatening to boycott the museum. You can't say Lincoln was gay. If we don't do this, we're letting the heterosexual terrorists win. There are trans terrorists too. Caitlyn Jenner. So now Caitlyn Jenner is a terrorist because I assume because she's conservative. Okay. You see? Now, so the political biases of the people who made this movie, and, and also, by proxy, the general political biases of gay culture are being shown right here. A lot of it is a progressive hive mind that does not accept any dissent. Because if you dissent, somehow you are transphobic, you're homophobic. Uh, this constellation of words that has been used to categorize dissent, even amongst people who are gay, are nothing more than thought terminating cliches that add nothing new to the conversation. They keep the mind weak and the spirit suppressed by adding nothing new or productive to the conversation. It's censorious behavior that does nothing more than elevate the egos of those who, as the old psalmist says, think themselves wise but thus became fools. Elevating the egos of fools. That's what a lot of this is. You're so different from me. You're very intense. I like to keep things chill. I can be chill. Just like a manly man. Sup? Sup? I got you. Yeah. You're gonna need some help here, bro. Oh, oh, hey, I'm gonna need some help here, bro. Oh, whoa. What is going on with you? My whole life, I prided myself on being self-reliant, but this guy has gone into my head. Maybe you're both bottoms and that's the problem. Bottom day! Bottom day! Yeah. What? Okay, in an era in which in an era in which s political materials about sexuality are being taught to children that look just like this little girl right here in this trailer, the directors of this movie thought it would be good to include a child saying the word bottom dance, using a sexual term, and then dancing at, in relationship to it. Who thought this was a good idea? 
whoever, whoever what pa whatever parent lets their child act in this movie should be ashamed. Children should not be exposed to such concepts. And, and because there are people in the LGBT lobby that are pushing for such concepts to be included, such as sexual education for, and, 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 and talking about gender ideology for kids all over the nation, because there are a few radicals who are pushing for this, many people are starting to have bad opinions about gay folks, which is why the, the organization Gays Against Groomers is actually necessary. Because it has, it, there has to be a, made a statement that just because you like men does not mean you want to imperil children. But there are some people who believe they're helping children by going ahead and introducing them to sexuality, which is far from the truth. Also, queer theory. I did a long video about queer theory. I'll, I'll put it right here if you guys guys can see it. Uh, queer theorists, their entire idea is to destroy the concept of a child being innocent and then reinvent it to allow predatory relationships to occur. This is happening on a systematic level and gay folks are being used to push it. And there has to be someone saying this can not stand. But this movie is fucking all of that. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's finish this out. Oh my god, do you guys remember straight people? Yeah, they had a nice run. No! Horrible. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. If you want a movie to see all the stereotypes, many of which are actually true about gay culture, but actually that glorifies those stereotypes, if you want to see a movie that glorifies the materialism, the vanity, the hopelessness that so many gay men feel, the, se the, oh, the over-expressed sexual appetite, if you want to see a movie that does all of this, go right here, because this is where it is. <sighs> gay, gay folks have a higher rate of suicidality than the general population. And that's not because of, simply because of discrimination. That's been the narrative pushed for so many years. There was actually an article by the Guard, done by The Guardian that, that, that actually examined a five-year study uh, uh, based on psychological studies that actually examined um, gay and bisexual men to see the source of their depression and their stigma. And a lot of it, a lot of their stigma and their depression came from status. The, the article says this, um, the, the, the psychologist and his colleagues tell that the stress gay and bisexual men reported experience relating, related to their community's preoccupation with sex, status, and competition. So sex, status, and competition are actually the things, according to this Guardian article, that have, ha that have weighed on gay and bisexual men. It goes on to say, rejection from gay and bisexual peers found in a follow-up study soon to be published in the Annals of Behavioral Medicine was also associated with an increased likelihood that men would engage in sex that put them at risk for HIV. So you have a certain image being projected in gay culture. That I, and I, and I have personally had struggles with this. An image of something that may not even be realistic for most people. And that's the image that a lot of folks want. Um, and if they don't fit, if people don't fit that image, they are rejected in mass. Now, of course, there are many different kinds of images, but all those images hinge on sexual desirability. They don't hinge on character. They don't hinge on values. They don't hinge on anything that actually matters. The soul of a person, things that will sustain and last despite time's weathering effects, because this physical appearance stuff is going to go away as time continues to progress. Uh, you, you, and yet there are so many people binding themselves to depression, binding themselves to mediocrity, binding themselves to low volume ways of thinking and seeing the world, which are leaving them old, lonely by the time they die in their 60s, chasing young men on some gay sex app that also, according to studies, increases depression. And I don't care. You could... The most progressive gay guy will probably tell you that going on these gay sex apps and engaging in all these hookups does not lead to happiness, because it does not. All of this stuff is commonplace, and it's exalted, and it's praised in gay culture, and this movie is doing just that. It's continuing to keep the cycle going. Someone has to say the cycle has got to stop. Someone has to say the cycle must end. Now, I'm speaking in generalities here. There are plenty of gay men that are monogamous and married and, and they have fulfilling relationships. That's not the norm, though. That's not the norm. 
The norm is the depression. The norm is the constant validation you people seek from other men. The norm is the body image issues. The norm is the, 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 the longing for someone to have a long-term relationship with, but only finding short-term flings. That's the norm. And unfortunately, I'm beginning to think from my generation, Gen Z, that's also starting to become the norm on the heterosexual side because of the prevalence of apps like Tinder and so on and so forth, where transactionality and shallow behavior is encouraged through clicks and swipes. This is a scary world we're starting to get into, people, in terms of just dating stuff. But this bros movie is an encapsulation of everything that is incorrect and wrong with gay culture. And it is my hope that this movie will flop and people will begin to embrace values and character and not shallowness as a path forward. Because if shallowness is the only thing that you have, that's all you're going to get. And that will continue to result in the drainage of human potential that I mentioned earlier. All right, my friends, think about it. I love you guys so much. If you love me, please sure like this video, subscribe to this channel, share this video, comment on this video. My friends, love you guys so much, and please stay pensive. Bye, guys.